Hi, I'm Lavender. I'm a detransitioner who still supports gender-affirming care and transition, even after detransitioning. I want to tell you my story. I want to explain why I detransition and go through the millions of comments that I have gotten over the last two years. This video is written and created and intended to be watched by people who are 18 and up. The discussion can get a little bit heated and the subject matter can get very dicey. All of my content is made for adults and all of my content is intended for adults. I put out several videos over the last couple years discussing my detransition and I've never gone in depth about why I'm detransitioning or what led up to it. I also have had several videos go mildly to decently viral from a million and something to three million and something views. In that period of time, I noticed that the comments were really showing me not only how people viewed me, <laughs> view transition, detransition, the common misconceptions, and the complete misunderstanding of what being transgender, transitioning, or detransitioning is. And I'd like to break that down with you in as fun and easy to process way as possible. I have sorted through the thousands and thousands and thousands of comments <laughs> so that you did not have to see all that pop up in chaos. And now, I'm going to tell my story and answer your questions, so I hope you'll hang around and sit through this one with me. Noting or relating to a person whose gender identity does not correspond with the sex registered for them at birth. A transgender person is a person whose gender identity differs from the typical associated with the sex that they were assigned at birth. Some transgender people who desire medical assistance to transition from one sex to another identify as transsexual, others just identify as transgender. The term transgender, although it used to be a very defined, understandable term, where it was a person transitioning from the gender they were assigned at birth to the gender that they preferred, male to female, female to male. That's not how human gender works. And a lot of people hate that. A lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people don't understand that there are people that fall in between those lines, like myself, who are intersex or ambiguous, which I'll go more into that a little bit later. Transgender is an umbrella that encompasses non-binary, gender non-conforming, agender, and so on. And a lot of those terms are either not familiar with people or they don't understand how somebody isn't just a man or isn't just a woman. Some people feel as if they have no gender. Some people feel as if they fluctuate from gender to gender. Some people feel as if they sit completely outside of that binary understanding of gender. I have seen multiple comments from people saying things like, oh, well, you're putting too much thought into this. Currently, I'm just explaining a term to you. This isn't about me putting too much thought in it. It's about me explaining it to you at this current second in time. Now, there are billions of different transgender experiences. There are trans people who will go through every single stage of transition that they can. Medical, surgical, social, legal, everything. There are some who will only go through partial, like a name change and hormones, but they'll never go through surgery. That person still transitioned, and that person still fully transitioned, as long as they feel like they are comfortable with their body. Transition the process or period of changing from one state or condition to another. 2. The process by which a transgender person permanently adopts the outward or physical characteristics that match their gender identity as opposed to those associated with the sex registered to them at birth. The process may or may not involve measures such as hormone therapy and gender reassignment surgery. The goal of transition is not to make other people comfortable with you. The goal of transition is to make you comfortable with who you are, perhaps how you're perceived, but how you feel in your own skin. How you feel when you're alone and nobody else is around. How you feel when you're naked. How you feel when another person sees you. 
Do you feel handsome, beautiful, somewhere completely outside of that? Do you not give a crap about that? <laughs> that all matters to how those transgender experiences go and what choices people make. And just because you hear somebody say, I transitioned, doesn't mean that they took every single route possible or that they all do it the same or have the same outcomes. The term transgender was even removed as a disorder from the DSM recently, actually in the last few years. That's because being transgender is not a mental disorder or a mental illness in any capacity. Gender dysphoria is something that affects your mind, the way you see yourself, the way you live your life. So gender dysphoria is still within the DSM as a treatable condition. Not every transgender person experiences gender dysphoria. I can't speak for that experience because I have experienced gender dysphoria many times throughout my life and still do. Can say this, from all of the studies that I have seen, the best way to treat gender dysphoria is to listen to what the person wants. Maybe they might not like the outcome. We don't like every outcome that we get in life, but the happiness, the overall outcome, the Ha the joy in life is all different after somebody is given the opportunity to be heard and to figure out who they are if they need that. Scientific understanding of all things evolves. It does. It changes. People have different viewpoints. People have different perspectives and different understandings over time. Science evolves. Sociality evolves. We may not look at gender the same way that we do now, a hundred years from now. We sure as shit don't look at it the way that we did a hundred years ago. We have more understanding and more personal and social awareness and more understanding of things not being black and white or binary. There's spectrums in between all of those. I understand that a lot of people view this from a Christian standpoint. And many of you have put your God comments all over my videos. Though I have repeatedly requested you keep your religion out of the conversation. So, because you didn't, let's go ahead and acknowledge it, shall we? <laughs> I grew up Catholic. Devout. Went to a Catholic school, went to Mass three times a week. The priest came to my house. <laughs> I grew up Catholic. And I understand the Christian ideologue in relation to this. And I have one thing to say. You were taught that God tells you not to judge or condemn or throw stones at glass houses. You were taught, if you are a Christian person, that the good Samaritan is the Samaritan who sees somebody and assists them regardless of questioning who or what they are. And I would also recommend you get the branch out of your eye before you focus on the twig in someone else's. Why did I transition? Growing up, I didn't feel like a guy or a girl. I didn't feel really like a human most of the time from the things that I was put through. And if you want to know more about that, those videos are all over my channel for now. <laughs> I was taught everything on both sides of the scale. I was taught how guys were to act, how girls were to act, why that they were acting the way that they were acting. I was taught how to hunt, how to fish. I was taught how to log. <laughs> I was taught how to metal haul. And I was also taught ballroom dancing and cotillion, how to sing, how to hold myself just so, and what it was to be a lady or a gentleman. But I didn't feel like either. Even when I was in utero, like when my mom was carrying me, every ultrasound picture has my junk covered because I covered it. They didn't know what I was going to be when I came out, and the only reason why they knew what I was when I came out was because a doctor looked at my junk and said, that's close enough to a girl, and I do mean close enough to. I was deemed a girl. <laughs> I didn't necessarily feel like a boy. Though I was a tomboy, and I think that that's something that people fixate on in weird ways in relation to transition. I was also a girly girl. I had a pink bedroom at one point in time. I had a giant bug collection. And I was still being put through hell by my incredibly abusive parents and the other abusers in my life. 
So I was being raised as a girl. I was being called a girl at home. But when I started being around more of the kids my age, because I was homeschooled for a lot of my life and in Catholic school, so I had a little bit of a weird social dichotomy. Nobody saw me as a girl. People would ask me constantly growing up, what are you? Like, are you a guy? Are you a girl? Are you somewhere in between? Are you a guy dressing up like a girl? And that was the most common, was, are you a guy dressing up like a girl? So I started getting experiences very similar to a transgender kid as a kid without cross-dressing, because I didn't look like the other kids to them. And I'm sure that part of that was what I was going through and the malnourishment and everything like that because I was starved for long periods of time as well. Being seen as somewhere in between continued into adulthood and it never really stopped. <laughs> I'm still seen as in between even now. And some people just say, oh, well, accept your androgynous nature and go into it. And like, why does any of it matter? It matters because it matters to me. Just like anybody else wants to be viewed as the way they see themselves. I lost more and more love for my femininity as I got older. And it was because I was being shat on <laughs> for everything that I loved. I was being told that, ah, that's, that's fake girly, that's just the patriarchy, that's... All of this is fake when I loved those things. I loved that hyper-feminine, very girly crap and I like feeling like a girl and I like doing domestic things and I don't think that women should be trapped into those roles by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think that any person should be trapped in a role by any misunderstanding, but some of us like being like this. Some of us find joy in showing a little bit more skin or being a little bit more flamboyant in our femininity. And I just kept feeling worse and worse about it, but people just kept telling me how I would make a better guy. And this was my entire life. I mean, no, we don't get everything we want, but is it not fair for me to want to be seen the way that I feel? And it took me a long time to be able to figure that out. That's why I transitioned. I chose to accept at one point in time that I would never be the woman that I wanted to be in the way that I wanted to be that woman. But I thought I could be a man the way that I wanted to be a man, and I wasn't wrong. I chose to undergo transition. I chose to seek it out. I was not pushed towards it. Nobody told me about what being transgender was. Nobody said, oh, you should transition. It was always as simple as a sentence of, you would make a better guy or you look like more of a guy, or, ah, look at that jaw, you such a fucking giga-chad. I get it, but it's bullshit. <laughs> I transitioned because I wanted to feel more like myself, and I do now. My goal in transition, which is feeling whole, is complete. The years before transition were incredibly painful because I knew who I wanted to be and how I wanted to be that person. And I didn't have the courage to do it. And then I gained the courage to do it. And now I'm very proud of myself for going through with it. I'm very proud of myself for understanding that I needed that. Why did I medically transition? This was the girl that I was before I transitioned. The person, to be more precise. Hi everyone. I don't just create art. I am an entertainer primarily. And then I slipped and fell into my pain and became this girl. This is really weird. <laughs> Let's get to know each other intellectually because this is... I'm starting to realize how much more of a story there is to this than I probably wanted to acknowledge to begin with. And then I understood more about my dysphoria and who I was and I started socially transitioning. I really don't like filming like this and that it's in a lot of different ways because I hate feeling like I know myself and I can't do a goddamn thing about it. I hate being in this transitory fucking state where I can't do anything and I can't fucking feel human. I just get to feel 
whatever the hell this is right now. Hormone riddled little boy looking motherfucker. That is how I feel about myself right now. Cut all my hair off, grew my body hair out, got a job as a guy, chose a male name, even changed my gender marker on my ID. The job I got was as a cook in a small town country diner. I socially transitioned from 2017, late 2017, all throughout 2018. Then I got a gender assessment done by a gender affirming therapist who had a trauma specialty. So this was somebody who was equipped to deal with somebody like me. I went to several appointments. Throughout that process, he asked me a thousand questions and I answered them. And by the end of the eighth appointment, he told me that I was safe to transition and that I was a good candidate for it. After that time, I came out to my parents and the rest of my family. My father was probably the kindest out of anybody, though he definitely wasn't there for me. He was kind and he was understanding. He told me he loved me no matter what. And then he made a horrendous joke, which is both as trash as it is funny, unfortunately, which I told him that I had bottom dysphoria and I was wanting to get bottom surgery. And he told me that he, hey, er, and he said, oh, well, you're going to get an adedictomy, which is hilarious and awful and is now become a bit of a complicated, funny memory. My father and I have a very complicated relationship, and I don't think I'll ever forgive him for certain things, but I can definitely say that he was the only person in my biological family who was really there for me. I had other family members tell me that I was a disgrace or that I was ruining my body. I even had one family member ask for naked pictures of me since I didn't see it as my body anyway. And that was pretty hard. This all happened in my home state of Arkansas. Now, in Arkansas, you didn't need to have a gender assessment before starting hormone replacement therapy at the time, but I chose to because I really wanted to be sure that transition was the right option for me. I was scared. I was scared because I had listened to a thousand horror stories from detransitioners making it sound horrible when it wasn't. So I got my assessment. After coming out to my family, I moved to Oklahoma. I started my hormonal transition through Planned Parenthood a couple months after moving. Started therapy around that time too. I was very honest with my doctors about everything that was going on with me and they were honest with me. When they tested my hormonal levels, my testosterone was a lot higher than it should have been for a standard female. And that on top of my differences in my lower region naturally, um, led me to understand that I was intersex. My name is Milo and I am this female to male transgender person. I've been on testosterone for a little over a year now and it's the best decision that I ever made. It's made me calmer, more level-headed, my mental and emotional states are more balanced. For one year on testosterone and completely pre-op everything. Today is my one year on tea, and I am very happy. I'm a little bit weird out with how quick this year went, but I'm extremely pleased with all the changes that I've seen up to this point. Facial hair that's actually noticeable in pretty much any light. And probably about three, four months now, this goes, it's dropped significantly. As far as the transition goes in general, I'm very happy. I don't really have anything that I can complain about. My transition was completely successful. Uh, in order to pass, I didn't need any surgeries. My facial structure adjusted, voice dropped, full beard came in. I even lost all of my breast tissue. Literally, it redistributed out of my body and I hadn't ever heard anybody talk about that, but I went from like a mid C down to less than an A cup. My chest was passable just because of hormonal transition. My face was passable. My voice was passable. I'm short. I'm 5'5 five five on a good day. So I was definitely a short cane, but I passed really, really, really easily.
my medical transition was a complete success. And I medically transitioned for four years. Throughout that period of time, I fell more in love with my body. My dysphoria lightened. My bottom dysphoria is one of the only things that really hangs on now. And I still may get a metoidioplasty in the future. My medical transition all happened when I was an adult. I started my hormonal transition on, on October 15th of 2019. I was 21, almost 22 years old. I was a full grown adult. I could legally drink. When I chose to transition, I chose to transition. It wasn't something that I was tricked into, coerced into. I didn't make it as a dumb decision as a kid, which by the way, people who try to say, oh, we don't let kids get tattoos. Well, got that at 14, got that at 15. Let's keep talking, shall we? We'll get to that once we get to the uh, if kids should transition portion of this video. That's my medical transition. Now let's talk about what detransition is. What is detransition? Detransition is the process of reversing or stopping gender transition. Some people who detransition no longer identify as transgender. However, detransition is the process of stopping and then either reversing or just existing in the state post-transition without any continuation of that transition. Many people think that detransition is synonymous with regret, and it's not. Many people also believe that detransition is because of somebody not being able to pass or because of environmental factors, and sometimes the latter two can be the case, even the former. Most of the time, detransition is because of lack of support or lack of access even medical circumstance, and not medical circumstance necessarily because of the transition, but because of the person's underlying conditions or how they responded to either the hormonal transition or, if they chose to do so, the surgical transition. And there are always going to be people who either regret a process that they go through, so let's say somebody got tattoos when they were younger and they disliked them, there is more of a commonality of somebody regretting a tattoo than there is of them regretting transition. Those numbers are a lot higher too. People also commonly believe that detransition is because of somebody having a negative outcome with a surgery. And again, although that is a percentage of the people who detransition, it's not everyone. In the same way that there are thousands of different ways to detransition or ways to be a detransitioner, it's the same with transition. They're different sides of the same coin. Detransition can look like people going through the reverse of the same process of transition. So social, medical, hormonal, legal, which does involve a lot of different steps and it can be very time consuming. I've had several comments from people saying, oh, well, this just happened because you rushed into it, or if people just wouldn't rush into things. There are many barriers throughout the transition process that prevent a person from rushing into it, unless they have an exorbitant amount of privilege. And for those who do have that privilege, it's important to do your research the same as somebody who does not have that privilege. I had put together deep explanation on what the medical side of the transition is and lost all of that footage. Um, I lost it three times now. So I'm going to break this down simply and I'm going to recommend that you do your own research if you wish to know more about this subject matter as well. And if you want to know more about detransition, you can look into it. I recommend some of these studies done by uh, Professor Kenan McKinnon, who has been studying the social diversity and the gender diversity within the detransitioning population, both between Canada and the US. So I would recommend looking into some of the studies that he has put out recently.
I would also recommend looking into the National Library of Medicine and reading those documents if you'd like to know more. Detransition is not a failing on the transitions part. Why did I choose to detransition? I chose to detransition because of circumstance, spite, understanding myself, and choosing to continue and move forward in a situation that didn't necessarily feel like it had a good answer, especially towards the beginning. I mentioned earlier that I'm from Arkansas and I moved to Oklahoma. Well, the governor of our state, amidst the wave of anti-trans bills and legislation that came through 2022 into 2023, and it started even in 2020 and 2021. A lot of people think that the legislation that came through Oklahoma really wouldn't affect the adults in the area. However, a lot of it, especially the health-related portions, did end up affecting access to care. I got my transition medication through Planned Parenthood, and after several bills were signed into law, I no longer had the capability to access my testosterone. So in essence, Governor Kevin Stitt is the first reason why I detransitioned. Following that was the fact that I had to sit and think about the fact that I had just lost access to my medication that I had had for years and that had helped my muscle health, my bone health, it made sure that I was able to really come back from a lot of the things that I was put through in my childhood and adolescence. It was an incredibly heartbreaking experience for me. A few months prior to all of those legis points of legislation going through, I started considering what detransition would be for me. And in my circumstance, I cried. <laughs> I cried a lot, and I got really angry, and I broke down, and I had thoughts about not being around anymore, and I really felt backed into a corner. I think part of that was because I moved to Oklahoma to be able to access my transition, as well as being able to have a, a fresh start. And this just felt like no matter where I went, I wasn't going to be able to be comfortable being myself. The more that I processed it, the more that I realized that it wasn't so much about social transition for me. It was about how it helped my body and how it made me feel and how much better I felt. Especially better in comparison to how I was pre-transition. I stopped taking testosterone um, a little bit before January of 2023. Started detransitioning in private because I wasn't sure how I was going to move forward. I had become more comfortable being more just expressive in my gender and wearing makeup with my beard and just existing as I was at the time, just having fun and trying to be myself. And I kept hearing more and more trans stories of people who were also being put in the same position who were feeling things differently than the way that I was feeling. I was genuinely going through the process of detransition, but I was doing so quietly at the beginning. And then I started to realize that I needed to talk more about my experience because everything that I had always heard about detransition had been horrendous and it had been earth shattering. and. I was realizing that the experience that I was having with it, which was being incredibly grateful for my transition, mourning the loss of my transition, and trying to figure out who I was and why I was feeling so complicated about this. I had been more feminine and more feminine over a good year and a half prior to detransition. At that point, I realized, okay, I think I can live in the role of a woman again but I wasn't quite ready to accept that and I wasn't quite ready to figure out what that meant because again, I just kept hearing, oh, well, detransition's a failure or, oh, well, it just means you never should have transitioned and I, I never felt that way. I realized when I first started detransitioning that I may 
want to speak on it. And I realized it because it was a situation that was forced that became my choice. I could have jumped through every hoop in the book and I could have paid through the nose and made sure that I had my hormones. I absolutely could have, but I didn't. When I lost access, I paused and I started to think. And I started to really think about who I was and what I wanted and how I felt. And I remembered the amount of feelings that I had of not being enough of a girl and I can be a better guy and then feeling like that got ripped away from me too. So I started talking a little bit more about my detransition while I was going through the tail end of a really, really long psychological breakdown, which a lot of people have tried to equate my mental health with my detransition or say that they're innately connected. And I know that people want to see it that way in my case, but it's really not. And I will spend more time explaining that, that this video just, it doesn't have, I don't have the storage capacity to cover all of that in this video. And I don't think that you have the emotional bandwidth to listen to all of it today. <laughs> so we'll cover that another day. My mental health is not why I'm detransitioning. My mental health isn't why I transitioned. I was starting to think more clearly and I was starting to feel my feelings more clearly. My heart was also broken in a lot of ways because I hadn't been listening to it. I hadn't been listening in my mind about what I needed in certain portions of my life and things that I needed to work for on my own or things that I needed to work towards on my own. So I continued to detransition and then I started to feel more myself as my body kind of adjusted again and I started to get a little bit more curves and a little bit more weight. And I started to realize that I was feeling a lot closer to myself and that got hard because I felt so guilty. And I thought, oh, what if, what if I'm the issue in this? What if I'm part of the problem? And I had to remind myself how much better I felt because I went through that process and that I was allowing myself to be in my own head about this because I didn't have anybody to connect with on it and I didn't know what to do and I didn't have a path. I didn't have a doctor explaining to me what the next steps were so I had to rely on a lot of research to try to really understand what was happening. And I started to understand that maybe my gender really was just more fluid and I tried to work with that and people were so cool about the idea of somebody's gender fluctuating and being fluid and I think people had a hard time understanding how I was able to look like this or grow my facial hair out and look like a guy so easily and everybody just kind of viewed it as a costume which didn't make me feel more real. I just kept feeling like I wasn't being heard no matter how much I explained and no matter how much I tried to really get people to see it from the perspective. And it's not that people weren't listening, the kindness that people gave me throughout my detransition, especially just the kindness in general. My friends were incredibly kind and they tried to understand. Uh, my partner, who is now my best friend, is incredibly kind and just adjusted as I adjusted. and kind of just went with the flow, which I really appreciate. My boyfriend really helped me through kind of the last stage of it, where I was having a really hard time accepting that I wanted to be viewed as a woman. And I didn't know necessarily what that meant for me and how I was supposed to move forward and what I was supposed to say or do. And I just, I really appreciate their support. I spoke to my father, which again, we don't have the best relationship, but we speak periodically. And I explained to him that I was detransitioning. And he told me that I was a beautiful person and that I always had been and that I always would be and that it it didn't matter as long as I was happy. He asked if I uh, still grew out my beard and I explained that yeah, I do every now and again, but usually I shave it about every two to three days just because I prefer how I look without it right now. And I'm not rushing towards 
any next steps in my detransition, though I am moving towards them. I'm going to be changing my gender marker back to female soon. After I've done that, I may post an update and just explain to y'all, like, what the- Is it difficult to detransition, or is it painful? Like I said, every detransition is different, and some people can experience more pain than others. Some people, like me, experience very little pain. Emotionally, I experienced a lot of pain towards the beginning, and as I had to really come to grips with who I was and go through the process of physically detransitioning, it really changed my perspective on a lot of things. My detransition has been something that was not medically assisted until like two months ago when I started birth control again, and that's non endocrinologist guided estrogen and it's made a huge difference in my body but detransitioning the worst pain is for me and again female to male to female again so I'm feeling my muscles break down a little bit just like trans women do and I'm feeling my body adjust and I'm gaining new fat in new places and I went for years without a period. I actually stopped having a period before I started taking testosterone. And the periods at the beginning of the detransition were painful as hell. Um, they've mellowed out since then, but they were insanely painful. And they were before I transitioned too. So I would actually say that transitioning probably just gave me some alleviation from the symptoms and now my symptomology is reduced quite a bit. I mean I still get nauseous on my first day of my period and I still get a lot of pain and like I kind of want to lay on the ground but that could be all number of different conditions that I would have had prior to transition. My fat redistribution really did go quite quickly. I got a very feminine form again and then I moved into a little bit more of a comfortable weight class where now my body just feels a lot more like my own. Now the steps that I'm going through with the detransition are definitely my own steps. As I said, I'm gonna be changing back my gender marker and I may end up getting some electrolysis or doing some at-home hair removal for certain, like, it, certain parts of my body that I just don't like hair on. Um, I may leave my beard for now, I think that I'm going to. I'm very attached to it, and I do still love it. As far as my voice goes, which thank you to everybody who has complimented it. Seriously, thank you. Um, I just adjust my voice here and there. I don't plan on doing any vocal training to make it more feminine than it is. I don't plan on getting a tracheal shave or anything like that. I'm happy with it. I don't need to get implants or anything like that. My uh, breast tissue has grown fully back and I am back at a 32C again. As far as future transition, I may still get amatoidioplasty, which is my business and I'm sharing it with you out of kindness, but as far as your opinion on it, that's null and void to me. I'll probably end up getting on some adjusting hormones because I am intersex and that is also part of my detransition is truly understanding that my body being intersex was a groundbreaking understanding for me because it helped me understand why I felt so different in certain circumstances and why I didn't feel like the other girls and it's because I wasn't. Um, I think that the overlap between intersex and trans experiences is innate and it's gonna happen and it's because we don't both experience social difference and gender dysphoria and I don't think that it should be this intersex versus trans thing that there has been in the media either because the experience that intersex people who are put through gender assignment surgery which I was not go through is a life-changing and medically traumatic experience for many people but the experience that people go through with gender assignment surgery as an adult, which is what the standard of medicine is now, when it comes to the transgender experience, are 
very, very different. And although, yes, there can be situations with the medical outcome of it, the overall happiness and the overall goal is a very different goal. I think that between the detransitioners, transgender people, intersex people, people who are gender diverse in general, and people who aren't, our bodily autonomy is all wrapped up in each other's medical care. Because if one person can be told, you can't have that procedure that can help you, or you can't have that medication that can help you, then there isn't a limitation to that. And a lot of morality is being pushed at completely safe FDA-approved medical care. And I think that that's really unfortunate. How do other people respond? So, question. How do other people in the queer or LGBTQAI plus community or in the trans community react when they find out that I'm detransitioning with love. Nine out of ten times it's love and care and compassion and girl do you have fun, be who you want to be. And I appreciate them for that endlessly. There are a few people here and there who will send me nasty comments or send me messages being cruel. Some people will tell me to keep my detransition to myself, and there are even people who really do see me as an enemy because they find out that I am detransitioning. But the queer community has been nothing but love and care. Some of the worst cruelty I get are from lesbians and gay men who think that it's appropriate to talk down to somebody, whether they are transitioning or detransitioning, because they don't understand. When I could just as easily tell them that their experience was just as null and void and they'd be just as angry. We'd both be wrong. Both experiences that we have in life are real and are ours. And they have the right to talk about their experience, so do I. Was I scared to tell people about my detransition? Oh hell yeah, I was terrified. But I was also pissed off and I knew when I started detransitioning that I was going to do this, that I was going to be one of the detransitioners who voiced the fact that my transition saved my life and I fully support transition and gender affirming care for anybody who wants it. I was afraid of people treating me like crap and again, some people do, but not as many as I thought. Really not as many as I thought. Now, online people can be cruel. Ugh. Roll. <laughs> I will say some of the nastiest stuff to me. And I get that. But that's not okay. I'm still a person. Somebody still has to read that. And I read every single one of my comments. The more that I went through reading all of y'all's comments, the more that I was confused with how angry some of y'all were, the more that I was so grateful for the kindness. Y'all are... Some of y'all are incredibly, incredibly kind people. And some of the sentences that you have, hey baby, some of the sentences that y'all have left have been incredibly helpful to me, especially while I was going through all of them. And it helped get me through a really hard time when I wasn't sure if it was okay for me to even be talking about my experience. And I had to remind myself how many people told me that they appreciated me discussing it. I'm grateful to know who I am now. And I'm grateful to have gone through this process. Do I like the way I look now? I mean, a lot of y'all do. You've called me beautiful and handsome, and it is just overbearing the amount of care that y'all have given me. I do. I think that I would look a lot better now. And I don't think that I could look like this if I hadn't transitioned. Like. I think I'm hot, <laughs> and I'm happy that I feel that way, because I never even thought that I was going to get to feel that way, so, hey, cool. Has my sexuality changed? No, it really hasn't. So, my acceptance of my sexuality has changed. Towards the beginning of my transition, I saw myself a lot closer to a lesbian, and I understand that that wasn't the case then, and it's not the case now. I've been pansexual the whole time, but I have some serious preferences. And I think it's easier for most people to view me as a straight girl. If that helps you understand, great. 
that's not where my preferences all end. I definitely can have attraction to any person all over the spectrum, but I do have biological preferences, and preferences are okay. You can't make somebody feel bad for it, and being that I have a preference, it's my responsibility to disclose my biology as opposed to expecting them to, and to disclose that I have a preference. And as long as people can keep that in mind, I think that this conversation can stay really neutral. Let's put it this way, my body prefers men, and so does my heart. How am I feeling? I'm happy. For the first time in my life, I'm actually happy. And my life isn't just roses and unicorns. I've got a lot of shit going on. But I can experience joy now. And this is the first time in my life I've ever been able to do that. So, I'm happy. What is the lifespan of a detransitioner? The date is inconclusive and this question was cruel. Moving on. This is one of the only cruel questions that I included. And it is because asking a person what their lifespan is, is disgusting. Thank you. And this is after I told you to ask good or bad. I wanted you to ask the bad so I could let you know when it was fucked up. It's fucked up to ask somebody what their lifespan is. Did I ever experience dysphoria? Do I experience it now? And how different is it from before transition to post detransition? I do still experience it. I experience bottom dysphoria a lot. And I sometimes experience dysphoria towards not being enough of a girl still. But it's less by a marked difference. It's better. I don't think it went away. I think I worked on it. I think I went through the steps to help myself with it. I don't think dysphoria is something that goes away as much as it's something we learn to mitigate on our own in one way or another, whether that's transition, whether that's a personal understanding, whatever it is. But all paths are valid and should be viewed as valid because dysphoria is so individual, and it's so personal. If I could turn back time, would I? What about the transition? Was it worth it? Yeah, yeah it was. Every single day it was worth it. I would not take back a second or a minute of my transition, and I am grateful for it. I don't think that I could have gone a different route. I don't think I could have figured something else out. I think that I did the right thing for myself. What would I say to my younger self? Ooh, kid, you got a lot to go through. <laughs> oh, kid, you got a lot to go through. Do what you think is you need to do. I wouldn't tell my younger self everything that I know now because the process of learning is what made me who I am. I'd give them love and a kiss on the forehead and say, you are beautiful, baby. However you want to be, you're beautiful. Do what you need to do. And younger me would still transition. Because I needed it. And I'm glad I did it. Did I have any doubts? Were there signs that transition wasn't for me? That's also kind of a bold assumption. Uh, transition was for me. Like I explained, transition for most people who go through it is for them. It's not for everybody, but to go through all of the thought that it went through for me to get to the point of medically transitioning, I thought about every doubt, every worry, every concern that I could ever possibly have. And I always came out at the end with, but I still want to transition. And I'm glad I did. Now, I don't expect to ever uh, retransition in the sense of I don't expect to ever transition back to a guy, but I wouldn't be surprised if I did. I wouldn't be upset if I did. But if I hadn't been put in the position to have to think about my detransition, I don't know if I would have. And I'm not 100% grateful for that opportunity, but that's my life and I'm somebody who adjusts and moves forward. I think that eventually I would have figured out my gender one way or the other, but the medication aspect, which was really helping me in a lot of ways, and testosterone is something that I do miss many of the effects of, I miss how my muscles felt, I miss how 
some of my energy reacted, like how, how much energy I had. I do miss certain things about it, but I'm also grateful for what my body and what the extra estrogen from the birth control is doing for me. I'm happy for the breast growth. I'm happy for the fact that my I have more fat and more facial fat, and I'm grateful for those changes. So in essence, I'm grateful for my transition and I'm grateful for my detransition. Gender identity, oh, that's my gender identity. I view myself as a woman, a gender fluid woman, meaning my gender has been fluid throughout my life. Sometimes I feel more like a guy, sometimes I feel more like a girl, but I identify at this point in my life as a woman and I expect to continue to. It took me a long time to get to this point. And again, I don't think that gender has to be constant. I think that it can be fluid throughout life and it can change. I think that temporary transitions can be an answer for people, at least medically speaking. And I think that that's a rough thing for people to consider, but it, it really did help me. Do I view myself as cis or trans? Either, baby. Either. I'm both, or neither. I'm cis or trans. It doesn't matter. I'm fine with either. I'll stand by the trans community either way, whether you see me as part of them or not. They're still my family. Even if it's just through a kinship connection. I feel more like I've had more of a trans experience than a cis experience in many ways. Than certain things, I definitely have a cis experience in. For example, I have to take birth control. <laughs> like, I'm probably going to end up having a kid with my boyfriend. Like, that's just reality. And that is what makes me closer to a cis woman in a lot of ways. My dysphoria, the fact that my gender is male on my ID, the fact that I'm scared to go into any bathroom because of the way that people treat intersex people or trans people because... My junk just might not pass the vibe check. <laughs> Which... <laughs> I know I've mentioned my junk several times in this video, and... I'm gonna put this out there for anybody who wants, needs, or is gonna ask in the comments. If you wanna see it, go to OnlyFans. I set that up because of the amount of people asking to see my body. Enjoy watching me play. Ask questions if you want. You could send me a message on there if you want. If you want to see, you can see. I'm a performer and I enjoy what I do. Health and happiness. Happiness and mental health, technically. Am I happy? Yeah, I am. I really am. I'm happy for the first time in my life. I really am. And I can't be more grateful for that. I never thought I was going to get to... How's that feeling? And I have it now. Do I think that my DID had an influence on my transition? No, I don't. And I've discussed this in a video already, and I'll be discussing it in another one soon. No. No, I don't. Do I have a kinship with the trans community? Hey, I just talked about that. Hell yeah, I do. Hell yeah, I do. They have been there for me in ways that other people haven't with understanding and care, and some have been weird as shit, but every community has weird as shit people. I mean, hell, we've got Blair White. <laughs> I detransitioned because of circumstance, but I ended up finding who I am. That's not gonna be everybody's experience. There are several people who are gonna detransition because they have to, because they're being forced to by legislation or financial limitations or by medical limitations and this idea of somebody detransitioning being a failure really has me has really has my feathers ruffled you can't listen to the smallest portion of our community which is the people who have said that they are against transition and then say that that's what detransitioners are because it's not and i want to tell the trans community going is there anything i want to tell the trans community going forward Keep fucking going, baby. Do what you need to do. Do how you're doing it. Fight for your rights. Fight for your bodily autonomy. 
don't forget about disabled people. Don't step on them in the process. Don't step on mentally ill people in the process either. Remember, if one person's fucked, then another person's fucked. Bodily autonomy affects us all. Ah, oh, how does it feel to be a minority in a minority put over everybody else? How does it feel to be a straw man for hate? I'm not. I'm a person telling my story. I have said multiple times that my story will not be misused in that way. In fact, I have literally been published as a detransitioner fighting for the trans community. Not a straw man for hate. How do I feel about detransitioners being used? I think it's bullshit. I'm not going to mince words, babe. I'm not. It's trash. People should not be being put against each other when they literally have the same goddamn experience, just slightly different. Stop trying to use detransitioners against trans people. Stop trying to show fucking people detransitioners videos to convince them they won't transition. Yeah, they will. Are you transphobic at all or anti-transition? No. So much so that even if a conservative person who is also a transitioner who is also a bigot, because that's my main issue. You could be conservative, baby. But if you're going to be a bigot with it, which is where it usually comes into play, ooh, I hate you, but I'll still fight for your rights. I am not transphobic. I will never be transphobic, and I will never be anti-transition. What is the best way to support somebody through transition or detransition? Be there for them in every way you possibly can. Sometimes that does mean financially, because it's really hard to find work as a transitioner, or sometimes as a detransitioner, or vice versa, depending on who you are. Be there for them emotionally. Make sure that you respect their pronouns, don't ask too many questions. If you do want to ask questions, ask them caringly, and before you ask them, think to yourself, would I be offended if somebody said this to me? And if the answer is, yeah, but they're trans and I really want to know, shut the fuck up and don't ask the question. It's that simple, babes transphobia or hate. I mean, when my stubble's grown out, sometimes people will stare, but I don't really experience transphobia or hate in person anymore. I used to, really bad, and I've experienced a lot of levels of it. I've had guns pulled on me. I've, <laughs> I've been assaulted. I had co-workers ask to see my junk in the bathroom of the work establishment. Like, not even joking. Like, you're trans, let me see your crotch. <laughs> what is wrong with people? So have I experienced hate? Hell yes. Do I still experience it? Yes, but mainly online. And if I'm in certain areas, I absolutely will experience it. Especially if my facial hair is grown out or if somebody's staring at my Adam's apple. <laughs> trans rights. Ooh. Do I think it's fair for a trans person to enter a beauty pageant? I mean, fair to who? I know a lot of trans girls that are way hotter than the standard cis girl. <laughs> but all jokes aside, yeah. You want to be in a beauty pageant? You want to be in a sport? Baby, do it. You deserve to get to do it. You are no different because your circumstance is different. And as people trying to focus on biology crap, nope. All humans come in all different shapes, sizes, strength, levels, and prettiness. Fuck that. Do your beauty pageant. Fuck these people. Yes, trans people belong in pageants and in sports. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's one of the hardest questions, and we're going to go ahead and get this bitch out the way. Do I think that minors should be able to medically transition? Yeah, I do. Let me explain why. Before you lose your absolute shit. Medical transition for a minor is not the same as for an adult. There were years when it wasn't as clearly defined and people had negative attributes because bodies were still growing. Now, there are several years worth of checkpoints that people have to go through you cannot get the same surgical options that you once could. Any risks that you have, like thinking about, oh, I don't want a kid to transition, that's already been dealt with in the care protocols for transition now. And it continues to be updated because they check different situations and experiences. Do I think it should be legislated? Anything to do with somebody's medical? Fuck no. You get me? Keep your laws out of my doctor's appointment. Keep your laws out of my future kid's doctor's appointment. That too. If I had a kid in the future who wanted to ha who wanted to transition, I would completely fucking support them. I would be right there with them. I would make sure that they were okay and that they got to do things however they wanted to do it. They could stop whenever they wanted. They could go through whatever stages. 
because most of the time transition for children is social and environmental. Breeding is not the most important thing, so if all you can think of is, is that kid going to get to have kids? They may not live. Let the kid change their name. Talk to them about different medical circumstances. Nobody's fucking doing surgery on children unless they're intersex children to align to a specific social fucking dynamic. We can talk about that all goddamn day, too. Yes, I absolutely think that we should be protecting trans kids from people who think they need to put their nose in the middle of somebody else's medical care. I don't want anybody to think me insensitive when I say that I support transition for anyone of any age. That's not me saying, oh, well, we need to be chopping up the kids, and I've seen a lot of people say that, and I've seen a lot of people who think that a child transitioning is the same thing as an adult transitioning, and it's just simply not. When anti-trans legislation goes through, especially anti-trans child legislation goes through, it isolates a kid. It stops them from being able to use the voice, the name, or the clothes, be the person that they want to be. Surgical options are rarely even a factor until adulthood, and usually if they are, it would be something like a breast augmentation, which cis girls also get with parental consent from 16 forward in certain areas. It happens more frequently in certain areas than it happens in others, but it happens. Somebody helping their kid be the person that the kid wants to be is not a problem. And I think that everybody conflates transition with surgery. And it's simply not like that. Most transition is social, legal, and hormonal. Most is. And then the final steps or polishing everything or if there was bone adjustments, that stuff really does happen. And what you do when you say that you don't support transition for anyone, or meaning it should be the choice of the doctor and the patient, or in the case of a minor doctor, patient, and parent, you're saying that you don't believe that the person has the right to choose for themselves, or that the parents don't have the right to choose the approved and recommended medical option. This will be either this will be one of the last times that I speak about this publicly I'll probably bring it up every once in a while when need be when people need a reminder of this but it will be over on my other socials like it has been up until now I felt the need to clarify that because I also think that we need to be protecting the kids and I think that we need to be doing it in ways like making sure that child marriage isn't legal in every single state. We need to guarantee that it is not legal in every single state. We need to be limiting child labor laws. We need to be making sure that the SNAP and that the WHIP and that all of the programs for food and that the state um, insurance for kids is continuously taken care of. We need to be putting funding in schools and arts. That's what we need to be doing to take care of the kids not freaking out about a very small population of children's medical care. That seems ridiculous to me, and it is ridiculous. Now I'm speaking from this as somebody who did not transition in childhood. I transitioned in adulthood. But had I transitioned in childhood, and considering I was put on birth control at 13, 14, which did not only make my menstrual cycle consistent, but it gave me a female puberty that I really wasn't having previously. I was having an ambiguous puberty. I did go through a form of transition in childhood, and I'm just fine. I did get tattoos in adolescence, and I'm just fine. We make decisions with our bodies when we're younger, too. And the idea that somebody won't know themselves until they're an adult is not always dead on. And yes, the brain does finish forming at around 25, and they're all that science, and I can definitely tell you that the person that I am now at 27 is not the person that I was at 17. But I still agree with all of the choices that that person who was me at 17 made. And I still stand by their right to do that, and her right to do it, and his right to do it. 
no matter who I was at that time, I stand by my right to do that or to feel that way. Trans rights are worth fighting for. I have been hosting and fighting and trying to get people to understand this for almost two years or a little over two years now. And I'm going to start moving forward with some other content that isn't related to this. That you deserved the full explanation on why I was detransitioning. I want to say thank you all for sitting through this and taking all this in. I appreciate you and I appreciate you sitting and listening to my thoughts and my feelings on these things. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I will be responding to as many as I can. Uh, the closer that you leave the comments towards it being posted, the more likely it is that I'm going to respond, but I see and read all of my comments. If you want to see what else I'm up to, you can always follow me on Instagram or on TikTok. If you want the spicier side of stuff, then I recommend Twitter or OnlyFans. And if you want the more in-depth and more heart and soul or my art or just getting to know me and hanging out, then you'll want right here on YouTube.